like to have you get your plea at this time. We'd like to call this meeting of the County Board of Commissioners to order. All commissioners are present at this time. And our next order of business will be our pledge of allegiance and invocation. And that will come in by our county clerk, Carrie Melton. Actually, sir, we have uh, Christopher Porch here tonight. He's a member of the uh, National Guard. He's going to lead us in our pledge, and I will then um, give the invitation. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Commissioner, say that you have a huge compassion for animals. 
It must just be the Boston Terriers. We constantly have asked for change at the shelter. We got rid of a person out of the health department who was not eligible to run a health department, who didn't even know how you could get rabies. She's gone. It's time to make a change. Sam does a really good job of burying and concealing trash, but he has not the first clue about animals, not even compassion. We have to make a change. I'm tired of begging. You as commissioners should get off your thumbs and go and look at these counties that are making highway success. Without having to put a ring in your nose and drag you to a meeting or beg you to pay attention to what's going on. They killed dogs that were willing, people were coming to pick up. They're killing mothers with babies because they say they're not afraid of it. They'll kill the mother and leave the babies. They brought someone on now. Thank God. But they brought her on as a volunteer and now they want to pay her because now because that's going to run into the volunteer thing. There's waivers that volunteers can sign for dog bites, just the same as any other county. It's enough. It's time to make a change. It's, a time, it's time for our county to stop looking disgraceful to the rest of the world and step up to the plate and do something. Yeah, I was in here a year ago and I helped the baby county do the fire district up there. And they told me it didn't work on it. Wait a year. And now I've had insult and injury you've increased their county fire tax. Our insurance doubled because of no fire district up there. And in taxes in this county for 50 years. And not once in 50 years have I seen a dime spent in all the city limits of Shelby for people taking down. I just like to see if we get on the ball and do something. Thank you. 
Dang Lang, uh, 182733 Drug, Seattle, North Carolina. I've been on fighting the issue for three years, and that is the school system. Misuse and funds. Some of the county commissioners told me that if I got legal documentation from the state, that they would uh, fall in and hate me. I got that. I guess they've had some meetings with our superintendent, the county commissioners did, and uh, Mr. Bowles, Bruce Bowles, had said that uh, they had made a lot of changes. They changed the policy. You change the policy to, that was somebody doing something wrong, so it would be right. I'm, I'm here for the truth. We don't need to be cutting no teacher's job, no teacher assistant's job, cut some authority's job, and put it in those classrooms and let those teachers go back to going to work. And it's time for our county commissioners to step on to the board and talk to them. They keep bringing up, everybody keep bringing up, we're waiting on the SBI report. SBI report. If they're wrongdoing, we don't need no SBI report. We need to handle it ourselves. Uh, no matter this lady about the dogs, uh, I, wasn't, I didn't come up here to talk about dogs. But uh, we need to take care of dogs. But I got a left arm right here that I've got no feeling hardly in my three fingers because of pit bull dogs. They all be outlawed, period. That's my, that's my feeling for these. I've had my knee operated on, y'all seen me with a limp, and two pit bull dogs got a hold of me. And if I hadn't drove them to a vehicle slam, they would have this arm completely off. You can see the scars that's in my arm. They cut that main blood vein right there. And I like to bleed it that over pit bulldogs. So, but I am an animal lover, and I got a daughter in law that runs a grooming. She's with a human, uh, is Ashley Blank, that runs a dog grooming in Patterson Springs. They don't, nobody loves dogs no more than I do. But we do need to put some contracts on. Pits and chaps. Those two breeds for sure. Because they will turn on. But I'm here for our children, our teachers and stuff. County commissioners, I'm asking for your help. Changing policies to make something that was wrong legal. That's not the right way of doing it. We need to put more law enforcement at our schools to protect our kids due to break-ins and dope and everything like that. I'm all about having our sheriff's department mandate that. Y'all get some more duties in there. If our, if our school people can't do it, we need to step in. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Jim. Yes, sir. All the people who have signed up for the citizens' recognition, anyone who has not spoken, and would like to speak to the commission, they come up to the group. If anyone who has not spoken, you know one of the groups. In the gym, it's time I turn the meeting over to our county manager, David Deer, for the same future. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We do have six items for your consideration in our decision. First remark, item A is the minutes from the June 4th, 2013 County Commission meeting. Item B is a budget amendment and the Grand Center Enterprise Fund. This is to recognize the appropriate revenues and expenses in order to operate uh, the Grand Center Enterprise for the next fiscal year. Item C is a budget amendment in the Health Department. We're asking you to accept $250,000 in grant revenue from Carolina's health care system. This is to be used by the Clico Healthcare Network to fund indigent patient care in Cleveland County. Item D is an ordinance change to the Cleveland County Code of Ordinances. We're asking you to add section 6-1A to the Cleveland County Code of Ordinances, and this is dealing with leased property. Item E is a resolution uh, relieving municipalities of the property tax collection fee charged by the county when municipal property taxes are 100% granted back to the payee 
for economic development purposes. Item F is a budget amendment in the Emergency Management Department. We're asking you to accept federal grant funds in the amount of $14,878 to be used to purchase two all-terrain vehicles that will be used for search and rescue purposes. And that's all I have to see, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, David. Uh, commissioners, at this time, uh, any questions about attending? And if not, if I have a motion, is it going to be approved? Somebody wants to approve this. Okay. Any questions? I'll second. Mr. Allen, discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, please raise your right hand. Thank you very much. Always a special part of our meeting is we have special recognition of individuals or groups that have uh, made great achievements for Cleveland County. And at this time, uh, I'm going to let Bill speak or not. Uh, National Recreation Trail designation, King County Gateway Trail. Did y'all let him speak? Let him get up. If not, y'all. Come on, Bill. Clinton County has received uh, special recognition from the U.S. Department of Interior for the construction of the Gateway Trail. And I'd like to share with you a letter from Secretary Sally Jewell. Uh, the Kings Mountain Gateway Trail is a fine addition to the national trail system. This year it joins 27 other newly designated NRTs across the United States for this special recognition. We are very proud of these trails and the spirit of the partnerships and resource conservation that they represent. Trails provide millions of Americans with outstanding opportunities to enjoy America's great outdoors. On Saturday, June the 1st, 2013, tens of thousands of Americans observed the 21st National, National Trails Day. We hope that you were able to join us in that celebration. In close is your certificate of designation signed by the director of the National Park Service and myself and a set of new trail markers. And we will install those trail markers out on the Gateway Trail. And here is the uh, plaque for you. And I'd also like to recognize the Trails Committee. Uh, uh, Chairman Brian Bryce. Would you like to have a comment? Uh, just that we really are very appreciative of this day on and Waiting for a lot of work to build it there, there wouldn't be a on the trail. And if it hadn't been for Shirley, there wouldn't be a Shirley. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else like to have comments? Yeah, if it hadn't been for Bill McCarter, we wouldn't have a trail. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Cleveland County. And we are so grateful for all the help that you all have given us. You've given us all the good support and financial support, and, and you've loaned us bill from time to time. And so we're very, very grateful. Y'all, I think it's a great trail. I walk it, enjoy it, and I appreciate you being there. And commend you for the recognition that's on the hard work that's put there. Yeah, we appreciate all the hard work y'all done. It's just one of the uh, few projects that we have done. Uh, you know, even though, even though we helped bring in above Shelby, you know, with the. Uh, <coughs> all fields and so forth that the other world that we working with to do a big project up in there and even to the south of the whole spring that uh, we are reaching out to a lot of county to do what we can. So I thank you all for your participation. And I appreciate that bench that's at the top of that one hill. <laughs> 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 Sorry to get there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sorry to leave you. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, Doug is the vice president, Doug Satterfield, 
And um, Mitch Johnson was First National Bank as our treasurer. So we had some really great help to make this possible. And uh, we are moving forward and hope to start on two more miles of trail in the near future. Uh, but it's part of that if you're not Malcolm actually changed the oil in the truck yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> and he brings his chainsaw. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, if y'all would like to come up front here to back and people have their photo taken machine, we see if we can't get a picture. Come on. You want three board of sense? Yeah, come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. And Jean Kanai. Jean Kanai was on our committee for several years. Jean, come up here. Just because you're retired doesn't mean you get out of this. Um, 
before the storm, it was a um, gas station. And uh, there was a mother and her uh, little girl that pulled into the gas station during the storm and, and lost their lives there. Uh, we also went by uh, uh, neighborhoods that, that were totally ravaged, ravaged just nothing there. Uh, it looked like um, part of a landfill. Um, so the, the, um, it, it was just, it was just an unbelievable sight that we saw there. Um, but whenever I got to talk to the people there, and not only the commissioners, but the residents there, uh, they were so appreciative of, of Cleveland County, North Carolina, and, and what our, our county has done here, what our county residents have done. And I didn't know at the time, this picture shows, uh, uh, presenting the resolution to them, they passed a resolution as well. Um, and I'd like to read that resolution um, and present that really to the residents of Cleveland County um, because it's, it's not what the county government did, it's what, what the county residents did. So it's a resolution recognizing and thanking Cleveland County and North Carolina for support of Cleveland County tornado victims. Whereas on May 19th, Norman and Little Axe area of Cleveland County suffered severe damage from a tornado and Whereas on May 20th, South Oklahoma City and Moore was hit with an EF5 tornado that killed 24 people and destroyed or damaged several thousand homes and business properties. And whereas people in local governments across the nation came to the aid of Cleveland County residents. And whereas Cleveland County, North Carolina established donation stations throughout the county collecting tractor trailers full of items and collected several thousands of dollars for tornado victims of, of Cleveland County, Oklahoma. And whereas Cleveland County, Oklahoma and Cleveland County, North Carolina not only share a common name, but also compassion and service for its residents and others. Now, therefore, the Board of County Commissioners of Cleveland County would like to gratefully thank Cleveland County, North Carolina for their generosity toward the residents affected by the tornadoes. Adopted by the Board of County Commissioners of Cleveland County, on June 24th, 2013. Um, again, it was an honor for me to be able to um, to go out there and to see this. And I saw um, so many things. Uh, I'll share one quick quick story. Um, we were driving just right outside of, of um, um, right outside of Oklahoma City, um, heading to Moore, which is a suburb. And uh, I know a lot of people in the and the audience tonight will, will, will uh, appreciate the, the dire circumstances they went through. There was a horse farm that was directly outside of the, the, the uh, Oklahoma City. They had about 400 horses, thoroughbreds, um, and they talked about the value of the horses and everything, but uh, they lost all of them, um, every horse out there. They, um, they, uh, work to try to save the ones they could, uh, but they ended up losing all of them. They had so much damage to animals that were out there that they ran out of IV, um, and the only option they had was to actually put them down with the, um, by shooting. Uh, so it was a tough, tough time for everybody out there. So, but I, Mr. I, I consider it an honor for me to be able to travel out there. Appreciate the board support on, on that. And I know, uh, I know you all want to go with me out there, but uh, the breeze wouldn't hold that much. <laughs> Jason, thank you for taking the initiative to go. I just remember when I flew uh, the route from Shelby down to Katrina down in New Orleans, and at the same day station that took place there. Uh, I know the city of Shelby adopted uh, the town down there, and so it just goes to show you for the uh, type of citizen. Thank you for taking your time, uh, your family's time to go out and address it. Well, if I can add one more thing, too. They, they uh, were so impressed with our residents here in, in our um, our county. Um, even before I could mention them, they asked about maybe forming a relationship, a sister county type relationship where we could share information. And, and uh, we've already started to, uh, um, to start working on that. Uh, they've had some questions about how we do some things here and
So we're, we're starting to work on that now. So it's, uh, it's a very beneficial trip. Okay. Next agenda I went to public hearing at this time I'm gonna call Bill Carter up. Yes. Uh Bill Carter's trip. Oh, pardon. I'm gonna get ahead. Where's that one? There he is. Come on up there, man. Fires we've had in 2012 are going through wildfires for 16 acres. It was a relatively calm year in terms of the wildfire. Construction from threatened to save the value of over $428,000. This fire occurred in March of this year. It was a wildfire that got away underneath the building and destroyed the land out there. Debris burning continues to be the leading cause of fires here in the county. People burning led to escape. Other causes of fires from machine use, miscellaneous, incendiary fires. Happen a lot of people in that picture. Here's one of our tractors. We had to use it to control a wildfire, and we always use it on control burners to help keep, make sure the fire stays in check. Now, we completed 159 acres of hazard reduction work. Uh, this helps improve the forest and reduces uh, uh, wildfire chances. And we also utilize state and federal money to assist landowners in completing these burns. I went to California, and you can meet some interesting characters out there. <laughs> In terms of forest management, we will continue to write management plans. We wrote 128 management plans on 5,562 acres. We did site preparation work on 323 acres. That includes heavy equipment along with herbicide application. We've got a skitter that we can actually play, uh, spray herbicide to help control uh, the undesirable species. Final harvesting, we checked a lot of water quality sites. Here again, beavers are still in the county. Uh, 790 acres of thin were inspected. 93 forestry operations were inspected to ensure forest practice guidelines were in. We planted 801 acres with the help of Mother Nature. The rest of it was done by hand and machine plant. Cleveland uh, County ranked 37th in the state in terms of timber harvesting and delivery means. Our forest development program, this is the new logo, the new symbol for the forest development program. It helps landowners get approximately 40% of the reforestation costs to do work on their property for forestry. They received over $36,000 this past year to help offset the costs. Insects and disease, we're still going out helping the homeowners if they got shade tree problems, uh, helping turn these problems. Gypsy moth, it's not here yet. Uh, there were no gypsy moths found in Cleveland County this year. So that's a good thing. So the pine beetle activity remains low. I've gotten a number of calls on Ips beetle, so that's a similar type of insect, and it usually just kills a couple of trees. So we still promote smoky bear. We have a Cleveland County Fair. Uh, we try to get smoky bear around to the first grade classes and tell them about the smoky bear and preventing wildfires and how devastating they can be. We participated in a lot of training, and we taught training at various classes and statewide and in the county. This is our new assistant county ranger. Uh, the previous ranger left for Polk County. He took a job over there as a county ranger there. So for six months out of the year, I was the lone ranger. So I don't need to go see the new movie. <laughs> <laughs> but some other highlights that I didn't include on that. Uh, the Forest Service remains active in the Cleveland County Firefighters Association. We help uh, the fire departments with acquiring surplus military vehicles. We have a CASER uh, procure a five-ton military transport vehicle. Uh, there's no cost for this vehicle to the fire department, and they can figure it based on their needs. Um, in 2012, uh, the fire departments took advantage of matching grants through the state, and they utilized 
24, $2,400 to protect the firefighters and improve the equipment to buy forest fires. And since January 1st, 2013, there have been 26 fires that have burned 17 acres in the county for this year. Um, with all this rain, currently fire, uh, it remains low, fire activity remains low here in the county. So that is a good thing. In terms of insects and disease, um, I don't know if any of you have heard about the emerald ash borer, but it was recently found uh, in North Carolina and it affects ash trees. Um, it was introduced accidentally, came in on ship from Asia. Um, actually, Granville first and Vance counties are now on the quarantine. And you may be wondering well, how does this affect us here in Cleveland County? Well, there's not a lot of ash trees here, there are some. A lot of times you'll see them around in people's yards and everything. They get in there and they actually gurgle the tree. Uh, this insect has done a lot of damage in the eastern part and the midwestern part of the United States. And ash baseball bats, I saw an article on the news the other day, there, if this insect keeps going at its current rate, uh, they could be in serious jeopardy <coughs> if you've got an ash baseball bat. It's not going to hang on. Well, there probably won't be many more. Uh, there's no natural predator for this insect. So we keep a monitor on that. In forest management, like I said, there was 128 management plans written. Uh, landowners received over $36,000 in uh, forest development program monies. Uh, $703 was utilized for the Conservation Reserve Program, which is a federal uh, program. Information and education. County personnel came to three different types of fire patrol related training in 2012 and 2013. <coughs> Since I was on Ranger here, Smokey didn't make as many appearances to the elementary schools. Now, the new Ranger on board, hopefully that number will go back up this year. It's kind of hard to do a smoking program by yourself. You know what I mean? um, but we did make an appearance at the uh, Relay for Life out here at the Fairgrounds High School. Uh, we also helped teach basic chainsaw safety classes to the FFA classes at Burns and Grace High School in conjunction with the Farm Bureau Farm Safety Program. You know, we worked with Burns. FFA with various classes on how to mark timber and water quality issues regarding the current uh, final mineral harvest that's going on up there at Burns High School right now. So, y'all have any questions for me? Well, I certainly welcome. Mr. John, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to ask any questions. I have to take on this. I know, that's fine. Um, you know, we lost uh, several of our military. Question I have, I know that on the slide that we have a lot of uh, burns basically, to, I'm assuming to get rid of the underbrush. Uh, and my understanding is down in Arizona and California, uh, for some reason though, they don't go out and do control burns and get rid of the underbrush. Is that one of the major problems with all the fires that you see in California and Arizona is that they don't work to control? underbrush within, within the trees? That's part of the problem. Uh, other problems include uh, insect and disease damage. Um, they have a lot of weather related fires in that area where it also contributes to uh, hazard reduction burning. Uh, a lot of times even here in the county we're limited on where we can actually do burning because we have to manage our smoke to make sure it goes in a certain direction it doesn't affect homeowners and residents in a negative impact way. And you know, when you start dealing with federal lands and other areas that are uh, in developed areas, they have to do the same type of thing. And it kind of ties our hands as fire managers on where that smoke goes. So if people didn't really want um, to lose their property, they would probably allow us to come in and burn and deal with the hassle of maybe a day's worth of smoke so we can reduce that fuel load. So we have to really be careful on how and where we plant our fires. But yes, it does reduce the intensity of fires. You know, even if we burn an area this year, the needles are going to fall, and we have a fire the following year, but that intensity of that fire will be a lot less than what it would be pre-burn. And just to show you, I'm not quite old, I can't all get everything. We reported last year that, uh, and I saw the uh, are Picture. Uh, you were still telling us you had some type of agreement with uh, getting another dozer here if it's needed. 
Kathy. Yes, we actually, the state just took, uh, um, just purchased and it was actually delivered just a few months ago. We got a, uh, a CAT D, uh, D5K. It's a new model, it's kind of a smaller tractor, it's brand new and it's staged over in Rutherford County. And it's kind of a, a zonal tractor wheel between Cleveland and Rutherford County. And we've actually put on a, another operator over there. So before we had three tractors to cover eight counties. Well now, or two tractors to cover eight counties. And now we've got three, four tractors available to help cover the cost. When it's dry, the nine counties, eight other counties around Cleveland that's in this district, you know, they have fires. There's only so many tractors available. So it's done on a priority basis too. But thank, you. thank you again for your report. Thank you. Yeah. And also in the package too, I mean, uh, allude to the 2013 biannual report, it's on the website. So if you want to find out the other organizations and other facets that I didn't talk about with the Forest Service and see some other numbers, uh, I encourage you to go online and check out that report. It's on our uh, webpage at www.ncforestservice.com. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Before I got ahead of this couple of minutes ago, we are now trying to get harder. Up here, it's on the map of Ambo 13 show 3, Sister of Nicholas Patterson, rural residential manufacturing, manufacturing, residential, and stick. Did they have an idea this? This is area is approximately. Um, 13 parcels and 9 acres along Long Branch Road between uh, Grover and Kings Mountain. There are multiple parcels within the rezoning request, and as you mentioned, there are actually two different zoning districts. The RM district is the tan area, the R district is the white area, and the proposed rezoning is outlined in the dash line. We have a recommendation from both the planning board and the planning consultant at Isothermal. <coughs> Jim Edwards at Isothermal indicated that uh, he had reviewed the request uh, and visited the area. The property is located on the east and west sides of Long Ranch Road at Mullinex Drive between Bethlehem Church and US 29. The area is primarily low density residential with a mix of site built and manufactured single family units and vacant land. There are scattered commercial and industrial uses along Long Branch Road in the general vicinity. The current zoning of the lots included in this request is residential and manufactured homes and parks. The area across Long Branch Road is zoned restricted residential north of Mount Lance Drive. That's that bright yellow area you see to the left. The future land use designation is residential for all of this area. Proposed rezoning is consistent with the future land use plan, and the map amendment would maintain consistency with the surrounding residential land uses. Of the 13 parcels requested to be rezoned, the owners of the eight parcels have signed in support of the petition. However, these owners hold less than 20% of the total acreage. Uh, it's my understanding that the petitioner has attempted to contact the remaining owners without success. Current control of parcels uh, 10196, which is the Caldwell Ayers, has not been determined. Uh, the decision of the owners of the remaining acreage may be made known at the public, public hearing tonight. Uh, approval of this map amendment would no longer allow manufacturing housing parks or even manufactured homes, uh, which may be considered beneficial or detrimental in the view of the remaining landowners. Therefore, their position should bear on the board's decision. Barring the objection from the remaining property owners, the requested map amendment could be appropriate and consistent with the land use plan. And the planning board also looked at the, the case and isothermal recommendation, and they're, they had a split vote. They were three and three. But it's the fact they voted several times and um, never could come to a consensus on this particular case. The, uh, 
there are two <coughs> points uh, that they made during the meeting was that the area was designated as residential in the 2015 land use plan and restricted residential would be consistent with the plan. They all agree on that, that any kind of residential zoning would be consistent with the land use plan. Uh, the board could not reach a consensus on whether the amendment was reasonable and in the best interest of the public in this particular case. And I know how all of those property owners felt. And even there was discussion about how the, the property owners con would consider this amendment that uh, would be remaining in that parking district. A lot of good discussion occurred that night. We had uh, some of the property owners there and the petitioner was there. So, Maybe you'll hear a little more comment tonight from some of those property owners. Any questions of Mr. Carson? Hearing none, I'll prepare the public hearing up at this time. Anyone who wishes to speak for or against the ordinance of uh, changing from rural residential manufacturing and residential restricted residential. Please come up, take your name and address at this time. Hey, I'm Nicholas Patterson. I live at 13 25 Long Road. Uh, basically, uh, the reasoning for us wanting to do this, uh, you know, there's been speculation on parts of that land of more mobile homes being brought in. And also with that would be under a uh, out of state landlord. You know, the, 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 I guess the people that would be landlords would be from New Jersey, or live in New Jersey. And we were kind of, you know, the people's talk around there. So we want to keep the, the integrity of our land. Most of us own good sized lots around there, uh, wooded areas. And, and such like that, you know, and, uh, you know, a little bit of not let our property values go down, which we'd be afraid what would happen if this was the property go through, uh, if that was ever happening. You know? So we just kind of, you know, hoping to, you know, maybe with this passing, let our property values go up, you know, which would be awesome. And, uh, you know, just to uh, keep it, you know, Thank you. Any wish to speak forward? Yeah, my name is Brian Bigley. I live at 105 Truber Drive. Um, I have a parcel that connects to the property. Um, that where they're possibly considering moving in some usual homes. Um, I have a, a three acre lot. The property would, where the mobile homes were going to go, um, it, it's a narrow track. And I guess what we talked about um, the other week was the narrowest part they could put any homes there. But it's not, it's not large enough. But at the back, it opens up. And I guess the back part right there between the orange here and the hand, where the hand's at there, it, it, it opens up pretty good size there. And that area is where they would be placing those homes. And that's exactly where my property adjoins. And I have um, a very private lot. Uh, uh, the problem is my, my property is kind of down in a, in, in a little valley. And that property would be up on a hill. You know, I don't want to walk out my back door. Oh, and, uh, and look up on the hill and, and see you mobile homes like that. I just don't want that. Um, I feel like, kind of like Mr. Patterson was talking about, the people that own this property and they're considering this, but they don't even live in the state. And, and that kind of leads me to believe, as long as they're getting their rent checked, they probably care less that the property's being maintained correctly also. Um, like I said, I, I, I've invested a lot of money the past 14 years on my property. And uh, yeah, I just really think that it would, it would pretty much destroy everything that I work for. Um, you know, the, the money that I've, I've spent on my house and, and, and with house swimming, a very nice swimming pool, and, uh, and, and very 
very proud of him. And that's why I moved out of the seat in the first place. I lived in Kings Mountain. Uh, grew up in Kings Mountain. That's what I mean. And there was nothing wrong with that, but I just like to be out on a little bit more private. So, and I just feel like that's going to be taken away from me and my wife. And not just myself, but there's several other um, um, you know, homeowners down through there that will be affected also. Guys, just following a house um, and on the property adjacent to mine. He was supposed to be here tonight, but uh, he uh, also had a house in front of one of them. He had some power markets in the back. So I just, I really would, would like for y'all to consider um, rezoning uh, restricted residential. And, you know, that way it, it, it moves down uh, folks want to put some property there to rent. At least it wouldn't be mobile homes, you know, it wouldn't be that time. Awesome. I appreciate your time. I just hope that uh, you can take it uh, in consideration what we're doing for us. Thank you very much. Anyone wish to speak to the board or again? Thank you much for the vote. I've got is is because of the way that the, the, it's kind of sectioned out. Um, it, it's really targeting one property owner, um, and you've got a lot of area around there that's uh, barring uh, a residential manufacturer. And I, I'm not sure why it, why it wasn't approached uh, to if the desire of the community was for it to go. Um, restricted residential line was just targeted to that one. It looks like it's targeting one property owner. And um, 
that that to me uh, gets into personal property rights. Uh, man owns the property. Um, it's reasonable, should be able to do what he wants to with it. But if the whole community out there, and I'm talking about going for Steer Street and all these others up there that are, um, are, are set up now for RM, if they were if they were all to come in and say that they were behind this, that would be a different. For me, it'd be a different story. But targeting one property owner um, seems unfair, even though they they may not live here right now. Uh, they may not. Uh, they might not be local. Still, is personal property. I guess another question. Can we send this back? For example, just like Mr. Paul said, can we send this back for future study to give them an opportunity to take in the whole neighborhood or do we have to make you can make the area tonight? Like, you can make the area smaller, but you can't get larger. Make it smaller but not larger. And you can also change the designation. Um, if, uh, you could go to an R or uh, like you choose any zoning district, but the fact that you're holding a public hearing to change the zoning classification of those parcels that have been advertised, that's what you're here to look at tonight. So it's you're not restricted to looking at just that one designation. You can make it any designation that you choose, whichever you feel is most, most appropriate, but you can't go beyond that boundary that's been advertised. Another How many of the property owners did you say there was something out of, there's 13 neighboring properties? There were 13 total properties and Single out one property on 
the, the entire area were to be moved to our, our, our restricted residential and the signatures were gathered for that, um, that would be a stronger case. Now, the one that's already in the residential manufacturing, if we were to move it to residential, they basically, what they have there would be grants it's all stupid home, homes, so it would not it would not affect any of them because they're all stupid homes. home. Yeah. And R even in R you can have them all home. Do I have a motion? But put them over home in, they can do it without requesting. You just get a permit. You can't do it on a part of it. Unless you have a home you got a uh what do you call Especially the bench pipe, what condition you use? No, the, you can put a rubber trailer in there and it doesn't have to be a manufacturer. What do you call it? A monitor. Monitor. Mm -hmm. No monitor. It's a regular trailer in, resident, in regular residential. Yeah, yeah. You can have stick built modulars, mobile homes, manufacturing elements, any of that. Any of that's needed. I think I'm going to go with Commissioner Hall. I think that we're penalizing the individual, even though he doesn't live in our county or even in our state, he is a taxpayer. And with this group, I would like to see him go and spread out if they want to and do something for the whole area. And I'll even make the motion that we deny the rezoning. A motion that we deny the rezoning. I'll second that. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor, please raise your hand. Before and um, we'll look at the mathematical um, okay. okay, moving on to the board appointments. Thank you, Bill. Yes, sir. Gary, I thank you guys all together for this. It's a good Let's see if we can work our way through it. Regency 
workforce development. This again is another board that um, requires uh, members who actually work um, in uh, throughout the community and um, are in businesses throughout the community. I have before you. Um, there's two uh, a point two vacancies right now for three-year terms. I have before you David Farr, Vince Reese, and Kathy Robertson as citizens who expressed interest. But I also have before you a letter from um, Isothermal requesting that David Farr be reappointed and Vince Reese uh, be appointed to this board. Thank you. Thank you. They, they live in the county or the ETGA, ETGA King's Park. He lives in the He lives in the city, city of the King's Park yeah. jurisdiction. And I thought we would put him on our, our planning <laughs> board that was not actually in the county because I know David serves on, he serves on the planning or zoning board in King's Park. I didn't know. Yeah. So I thought 
Yeah. 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 Know the makeup of the current members. Those are the ones that were not through. We have if you scroll up. Yeah, that's the very right. Yeah, if you scroll up, you'll see the current board. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah
I really love that one. Uh, that calling comes up there. It was a great day. Uh, last week, uh, the county received a letter um, from the rural center that Project Gnome was awarded a four hundred eighty thousand um, dollar building reuse grant. As part of that grant, um, the county uh, needs to adopt a resolution uh, authorizing resolution by the governing body of the applicant. Uh, this. This um, resolution uh, notes that the county would provide a 5% match to this project um, and that the county manager would be authorized uh, to sign all uh, correspondence in connection with the grant and that the county will comply with all um, federal, state, and local laws. So I have that resolution. You each have a copy of that before you. Um, Busy couple weeks since we met last, and again, uh, uh, I appreciate the opportunity to be able to go out to Clinton County, Oklahoma. Uh, very well cooperative. Um, one thing I, I just feel kind of mentioned the young man that came and spoke at, at uh, uh, the National Park, um, he understands that it's enough that we have control over. Um, he's really just trying to get the word out about the furloughs that are being uh, forced upon the, uh, the National Guard. National Guard, and uh, he, he got a little choked up when he was talking about his family. Um, he and his wife are expecting their first baby in a month. Um, as a matter of fact, um, in order for him to be here tonight, um, he probably got hot water. Uh, he had his wife reschedule a three week order soon um, so that he could be here tonight. So, um, but uh, appreciate you if you're attending this. I wake up today with so much heat we got to put the meeting from the things that he discussed. I think I'll refer it to the next meeting. So good luck. But we do, I'm going to be out of town on the 23rd. Jason is all up for the RPO. They're moving ahead with the RPO MPO. So Bill and Jason will meet in a special meeting with the group on the 23rd. April put it on the calendar so it's there. So anyway, Hank, the uh, the planner from Gaston County wanted to make sure that it would be right if he come back again, he wouldn't get beat up this time. <laughs> <laughs> so I told him it would, it would be fine that uh, he will be coming back and they will be putting out a what is it, what is that? The memorandum or right. memorandum of understanding is what the group will be doing and they they should have it sometime maybe next month on Captain Bill and we've got to take it to all municipalities including Kenny with Bill will be able to do that. We don't have to, to be with so each one of us is all need to sign on if they don't then you know the, they can have representative but it'd be Kima Shelby and Bowling Springs will be voting members. Is anything less than a population of thousands can be an extra video number or an attend or whatever, but not, not voting in the rest of the county, in the small issue file in the county and the rest of the um, Just to bring you up to date on the county commissioner search, we have. Uh, Got the application. We are going to conduct some interviews this week, uh, today and tomorrow, and um, look forward to um, continuing on until we find the right candidate for Cleveland County. Again, I want to thank David for stepping in and being here for us. He's really been very helpful in uh, a lot of situations here in the county for us, and I appreciate it. I appreciate all the hard work that the other county commissioners have, have done um, in this search. And, the input and efforts of the Board of Commissioners. 
and uh, also I just want to mention something about the animal control. There's everyone here has been very actively involved with animal control and looking uh, at a lot of changes have been made in the last 10 years with animal control and we always are looking for ways to um, make changes and we have made some changes recently that I think are a positive matter but we need to get them in place and um, I think it would be a benefit that will fill us all into good things for us. Thing, uh, a real good thing that I did and I really enjoy it. I like my flying. Uh, I am now up to 965 kids for the first flight. Took 19 last Sunday for their first flight and their scouting merit badge. So we got 20, got one team now, 20 kids have got the flying merit badge. <laughs> well, you know what it's like to set the cup here, that one. Mm -hmm. um, okay, anything else? Okay, um, we will now be to recess to reconvene tomorrow morning, 10th of July at 10 a.m. at the Grand Center. We'll close the session to discuss the first bill matter. This is North Carolina General Statute 142-318.11-A6. Oh, uh, I mean, 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 I